Good evening and welcome to News at 10. I am Stephen N.T. This bulletin is live on your DSTV channel 279 and also on Facebook Live at TV3GH. We're also uh, hearing uh, your heavy on your comments this evening and uh, counting on them. How has the revocation of the 23 or so licenses of the financial institutions hit you? But before then, let's quickly uh, take a look at the major news highlights of the day. Uh, the Bank of Ghana has revoked the licenses of 23 insolvent savings loans and finance house companies. The revocation has become necessary because they are insolvent with no hope of being recapitalized within the period given to them by the central bank. On the chairman and chief executive office of Group Indium, Dr. Papakwesi Indium says the reasons put up by the Bank of Ghana for the revocation of the licenses of GM savings are wildly inaccurate. In a statement released under the signature of Dr. Papakwesi Indium a few hours after the announcement from the central bank, the group chair said they have received no formal communication from the Bank of Ghana regarding the receivership. On Karan Dennis Parship Osman Khan, operated by Car Parship uh, Ghana Company Limited, has birthed uh, the second D naval base in the western region. The Parship is expected to be connected to the national grid in 15 days. On government's boast on Employment figures has come under scrutiny as the deputy ranking member on the Employment, Social Welfare and State Enterprises Committee of Parliament is accusing government of cooking up figures. Richard Kwashiga also rubbished the significance of the jobs created within the various ministries, departments and agencies. Uh, the Ministry of Education says it has no immediate plans of scrapping basic education certificate examinations, BECE, but may in the future consider the introduction of a national standard-based examination. All right, so those were major news highlights making rounds on the local scene. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, the Bank of Ghana has revoked the licenses of 23 insolvent savings loans companies and finance house companies. The revocation has become necessary because they are insolvent with no hope of being recapitalized within the period given them by the central bank. The action was taken in pursuant of the Central Bank's Act 2016, Act 930, which requires the Bank of Ghana to revoke the license of a bank or specialized deposit-taking institution where the Bank of Ghana determines that institution is insolvent. According to the Central Bank's assessment, these institutions have no reasonable prospects of recovery and their continued existence poses severe risks to the stability of the financial system. The Bank of Ghana has also appointed Eric Nipa as a receiver for the specified institutions. The central bank says government has made funds available to enable the receiver pay depositors after their claims are validated. The Bank of Ghana has also revoked the licenses of two non-bank financial institutions, Express Funds International and Ghana Leasing Company, which are insolvent and have been inactive for a number of years. The Bank of Ghana says these actions are part of its efforts to restore confidence in the banking and specialized deposit-taking sectors. The first cleanup exercise by the Bank of Ghana was in August 2017.
All right. Uh, meanwhile, financial analyst and director of strategy and business uh, operations at Dalex Finance, uh, Joe Jackson, says one of the major issues that uh, led to the revocation of these licenses uh, of the finance uh, companies is greed. Well, first of all, it was not a surprise. It was definitely coming, and we were known that quite a few of the companies were in trouble. What was the surprise? There were, there were one or two, maybe three companies in there that I was surprised to see because uh, we didn't have full view of the difficulties that they were facing. But a lot of the other companies, some of the companies had even shut their doors before this announcement came. So... One, I would even just say that this announcement has been, is long overdue. It is important that the central bank comes out clearly so that those that are still strong and in the market can get on with business. Right. The uncertainty was bad for business everywhere. And I'm, I'm very glad this has come out. But I must say that one or two names in there were, were, were surprised. Well, the, 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 uh, if you ask me... Um, Number one was a lot of recklessness. Number two was greed. Greed. Number yes, recklessness and greed was really part of it. Because as financial institutions, we are custodians mm. of our depositors' funds, and they are given to us in trust. And for you to get to the point of insolvency, such that the central bank closes you down means it always boils down to a level of recklessness and greed. Definitely, the board of directors will have to carry some of the can. Governance was, at, 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 uh, was, was not good in a lot of these institutions. Mm. And the central bank itself has to carry a, a, a portion of the blame. Okay. We've gone from a, a, a situation of extremely poor regulation. And I always dare say that the two previous central governors did not do us any good. And they should, go, and all that is going on, they carry part of the blame. If they had stepped in as quickly as they needed to, this situation would not be as bad as it is today. Well, first of all, these institutions were regulated by the central bank. And so there must be some form of uh, uh, deposit protection for their depositors. That I w we will expect announcements to come as the dates go by. But remember that you are going to have to verify depositors' funds. All right, so let's uh, start the conversation. We do have uh, Professor John Gachi, who is a chartered economist, on the telephone lines. Uh, later, we'll be getting to Skype to speak to Kiribu Akudia, who is the executive secretary of the Ghana Association of Savings and Loans. And I have in the studio my colleague, Ibn Ejikum, uh, who is with the business Dex right here at Media General. Ibn, thank you very much uh, for your time. Let's quickly get onto the telephone and see uh, if we can have a little conversation with Professor John Gachi. Good evening, Prof. Uh, we're grateful that you could join us. Thank you. Mm, I know that the conversation has been whether or not the Bank of Ghana should be taking blame for all of this, especially since some of these banks have been insolvent way back as uh, uh, 2017. Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, new list, really, and some of the detailed reasons that have been provided? Well, I think uh, those issues are not, uh, are not new. We all do know that it is not possible for the Bank of Ghana uh, to put all the blames, uh, all the blame on uh, the directors and shareholders and top management of this bank. If you look at the corporate governance architecture of uh, the banking sector, it's such that if you are going to appoint top management, Bank of Ghana ought to approve uh, after doing thorough investigation about the background and the professional. Uh, pedigree of the person. That is the first commitment of Bank of Ghana as part of the process of corporate governance within the commercial banking sector. Secondly, they have supervision division. Uh, beyond that, they also receive auditors' reports. Uh, they also monitor annual general meetings. They receive various kinds of reports for evaluation and, uh, and decision-making. So 
there is no way the Bank of Ghana will continue to tout that they are clean and the whole problem is as a result of uh, shareholders and directors. They are part of the game. And uh, uh, over two years now, nobody knows what Bank of Ghana is doing to Israel. Mm. The only thing that they indicated earlier, that they are forming some kind of uh, in-house uh, team. They have done, they've done some changes in portfolios within the bank. And that is the end. So I think that we need to go beyond that and face the reality. When you say go beyond that and face the reality, what is the reality indeed? <laughs> it, it is very painful uh, if the regulator fails to do its work and the regulator decided that the solution to that is to, receive, is to increase the minimum capital mm. from 120 to 400. Uh, but by so doing, uh, commercial banks, financial institutions, which genuinely could have met a minimum capital of about 200 million mm. or 220 million, have to look around to get over four, about 400 million, and they are not able to get. That is the reason why you're closing them down. So, 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 so you, Professor Gachi, your suggestion, I mean, you've always you not been... Professor Gachi, you've always not been uh, in favor of using the minimum capital as a tool of sanitizing the, the, the banking sector, uh, sector. Are you suggesting now that exactly what you feared is what we have on our hand now? Exactly so, because uh, assuming the Bank of Ghana decided to use a minimum capital of 200 or 300, definitely some banks would have made it. So some of them who were short of were short of just about eighty million <laughs> to meet the minimum capital, they couldn't meet it. So that tells you clearly that the level of the minimum yeah. capital is part of the problem. Mm. And uh, what we are discussing today is a contagion effect from the collapse of the earlier banks that has actually affected the liquidity of savings the loan, microfinance and asset management company. So if we continue to say that this 23 uh, savings alone that we pull down, it is as a result of shareholders and as a result of uh, directors, it is not absolutely true. Mm. They suffered from contingent effects, lack of liquidity, because their monies were locked up. But, but I mean, there are, there are key questions of badly managed financial institutions. If you look at the reasons uh, that have been cited by the central bank, some of these institutions were running into debts, I mean, into negatives, several millions of, of CDs. That couldn't have been the problem emanating from setting the minimum capital requirement? Well, th th these, these are problems that some financial institutions may be facing, but... Uh, pause a little bit and ask yourself, if you have a responsible regulator, a responsible regulator will see this institution operating like that for over two years, then today they take this decision. Then we don't have a regulator. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> Professor Gachi, we'll, we'll have you hold and uh, we'll switch on to Skype right now and speak with Chinibua Kodia, Executive Secretary of the Association of Savings and Loans. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you extremely for joining us. Uh, we have this on our hand. I want you to hear what your initial thoughts are. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, if you can hear me, I want to know what your initial thoughts on this are uh, coming from the Ghana Association of Savings and Loans. Right. Uh, uh, Professor Gachi is on the telephone and we're trying to get to Skype and speak with Trinibua Kodia, who is Executive Secretary of the Association of Savings and Loans. Uh, good evening. So you can hear me. I'm asking what your initial uh, thoughts are on the decision by the central bank, which puts a lot of your members into a very uh, tight situation. Right, I'm afraid uh, we have to terminate that conversation until we get uh, a smooth uh, line so we can have. So, Eben is here. Eben, so uh, we have been talking. Uh, Professor Gachi is making mention of the fact that all of this could have had something to do with the Bank of Ghana setting a minimum capital requirements on the banks and demanding so much of them. But from what we have, I mean, the bank itself has said that uh, with effect from today, it has completed a cleanup of the banking sector, specialized deposit taking, and not
non-banking financial institutions, which began in August of 2017. It means that this is not something that just popped up. You were expecting us to get here, right? Yes, certainly. Uh, but uh, for the governor to say that today's announcement marks the end of the cleanup, which I have a little bit of doubt mm. because I know for sure that they finished investigations in the rural and community banks. Mm. Some of them have been penciled down for measures. Others would have to be recapitalized. Mm. So if he's saying they, they, they're done with the exercise, then maybe they've talked to the Apex Bank yeah. to maybe find a solution to, to whatever they found out. But for sure, I can say that they finished with investigation in that area. They've penciled some banks down for recapitalization and possible uh, closure. And so some of the reasons that have been coming up, uh, the detailed reasons of some of the issues that have been coming up are incredible. I mean, I... I, I look, GN Bank comes uh, very close to my mind. Some of the issues and allegations that have it's, been leveled against yes. GN Bank, including their ability to move as much as 62 million US dollars and a quantum of 718 million, uh, 18,000, I beg your pardon, British pounds sterling outside the country without following due process, suggests that there possibly were a series of bad corporate governance in all of these banks. Sure, Steve, apart from the bad corporate governance, we have a regulator that expects these financial institutions to furnish the regulator with quarterly and annual reports. reports. So if we sit down for years and we don't go through their reports to see what is happening, then it's come down to lack or poor supervision and monitoring. You, you look at the defense of Indum. One of the reasons for the closure of the say, of GM Savings and Loan mm. is a subsidiary that is offshore. I think with the name in Business Solutions, yeah. you have a International Business Solutions. Yeah. The, the Bank US. of Ghana has cited it as one of the reasons for the closure. But Group Indum just released a statement saying yeah. that the information about International Business Solutions is false. International Business Solutions has two main business lines, management, consulting, and import and export. They are actually saying that all of the funds mentioned are comprised of payments of invoices for goods and services mm -hmm. that that company, international company, rendered here in Ghana. in Ghana. So for the Bank of Ghana to use that as justification was wildly inaccurate. Was like wildly the GM Bank inaccurate. Is, is suggesting inaccurate. Uh, even let's let's quickly get uh, to the Skype again and try and see whether we can get Trinipo Akudia to join us. Uh, Mr. Trinipo Akudia is the Executive Secretary of the Ghana Association of Savings and Loans. Uh, good evening, sir. We, we apologize for the poor quality earlier, but you can hear me. So I'm asking you what your initial uh, comments are on this decision by by the central bank. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Right. I think uh, we're, we're a bit frustrated with the digital uh, connection to Skype. Even is still here. But let's see if Professor Gachi is there so we can wrap up uh, with Professor. We lost Professor Gachi. So, so even, I mean, there are quite a number of things. I mean, I only picked up uh, the issue of GN Bank. And you were talking about a new statement which they have, yeah. they have, they have issued sure. explaining that uh, that money we're talking about were, were duly earned. Goods and services Goods and rendered, services rendered here in Ghana. Ghana. Mm. So, so it couldn't have been possible that, that yeah you could state that as a reason for closing uh, the, the savings the, and the loans. loans yeah then one other thing that is coming up two years down the line we've not seen anyone punished mm -hmm. we've so far spent close to 14 billion cities in the cleanup exercise in a so -called cleanup. and we are still counting mm -hmm. because a receiver can come out and say that what we realized initially is different from what we are seeing now so the cost is going up so it means we could go over the 14 billion we've used so far. 
We've not seen anyone punish taxpayers' money being used to clean up the system. So the expectation of uh, uh, business watchers is that somebody should be taking uh, so the fall for the some fall of these for what is happening and be punished, be punished as an, for it as, as a deterrent to other people yes. who might uh, be thinking of taking deposited funds and using it the way they want. We had an exclusive interview with the governor of Bank of Ghana, and he's saying that we should give the attorney general some time. Mm. And one will say, what's the definition of some time? Yeah. How long? Long it's some time. It it's been two years. This yeah. process started two years ago. And we cited reasons for bad governance decisions and other things. People picking money to do their own investment. Mm. So in, it's a clear cut situation. Clear -cut we should situation. have seen someone being punished now. Hey, we'll leave it here. I know that this conversation will continue. I'm Stephen Etty. This is News at 10, live from the News Hub at, at Desawe Kandai and Accra. You can follow us on Facebook. We're streaming live there and also uh, streaming live on 3news.com. We'll be right back with more news. Please stay. Don't go away. Welcome uh, to, uh, back to News at 10. Let's take you through some of the comments that have been coming forward. We'll put uh, down uh, some of the reasons cited by the central bank for the revocation of these licenses. And we have some of you commenting. Uh, Nana Kofi Akuria Jabing says these actions were backed by law taking pursuant to the sections of the law of the bank and specialized deposit taken institutions, which requires the Bank of Ghana to revoke the license of a bank or specialized deposit taken institution, where the Bank of Ghana determines the institution is insolvent. And Oting Isaac says, initially, I didn't understand, but if the uh, reasons given are true, then bravo, Bank of Ghana. And uh, Fix Law DX says, good move to protect hard-earned money of ordinary Ghanaians and make our banking system better. And Nyameba uh, Chief Imam Ibra Ibrahim says, I think it's a good action. It will give way for the best to remain in the system. There are lots of so-called creditors in Ghana, but we Ghanaians want the Bank of Ghana to be fair in their action. God bless you for this program. Thumbs up. And Honorable Maspero Akwanda says, good move. I can now get my money at first allied. Right, so the understanding is that the receiver will be uh, paying all that is owed upon proof of evidence that that money is due you. And Samuel uh, Rex says this government and his finance minister are full of greed. And Kofi A. C. Daku says this is politicians thinking they are smart, right? So uh, that's the... Uh, there are comments coming in. Let's take our last story and we're out of here. President Dukufado says the increased pressure of the uh, increased presence, a bigger parting of Ghana armed forces in the Upper East region is to help secure the country's borders. Addressing a deborah of chiefs at, at Navrongo in the Upper East region, the president noted the initiative is part of efforts by government to make sure terrorists do not infiltrate the country to cause problems. <laughs> President Ikufado told the gathering that the soldiers are putting their lives on the line to enable the public feel secure. The president called on Ghanaians to support in terms of intelligence and information gathering. President Ikufado recounted the vigilance of Meshes Gregory Bagbemi and George Bonfondong, members of the Roman Catholic Church in Hamile in the Upper West region, who earlier this year, together with the church leaders, alleged to the police about the presence in the church of an armed person who turned out to be a national of neighboring Burkina Faso. And we need all of us to pull together and understand that the very survival of our nation is what is at stake in this effort that the soldiers are doing. They're not doing it just for themselves. They're doing it for all of us. And I'm appealing to you to stand behind them and give them your maximum support so that they can carry out their duties efficiently and successfully for us. Touching on the One District, One Warehouse project, President Kofado said, Nine are scheduled for construction in the Upper East region. The president appealed to the chiefs and people to help government combat smuggling of fertilizers for planting for food and jobs program. And it's all of us, our money which is inside the program. It's not just the farmers. People sitting in the offices in Accra are contributing. Those sitting in the offices in Navrongo are contributing. It's not just the farmers. And then we have a handful of greedy people a handful of greedy criminals, and they will use our money and smuggle our things to, the, to Burkina Faso. 
I am appealing to all of you. It is not right. And all of us should band together to stop the smuggling of our fertilizers to Burkina Faso. Right, so that's how we wrap up with news at 10. Thank you very much for your time. And we have the crew. Good night. And there's more news at 3news.com. Have a great weekend.